Hi everyone, Jason from Maycarry here with another project tutorial. And in this one, we're looking at how two color projects like this can be made with CNC machines like the Carvera. Whether it be signs, awards, ornaments, keychains, or tags, there's a lot of different products out there that are made using bicolor stock material like this. And you can find this stock in a lot of different color combinations. And of course you can order this from our store. You can also get the custom tag toolkit, which comes with the stock, bits, and other accessories you might need to make products like this. So let's get started. Using Makeara Cam, we can prepare a wide range of file types to make our two color projects. Whenever you make a new document, the first thing you wanna do is adjust your stock parameters. So we can set the material to be plastic, and the length to be 150 millimeters and the width to be 100 millimeters and the height to be 1.3 millimeters to adjust our stock accordingly. You can also choose to adjust your work coordinate system, but by default, the work coordinate system will be set to be the top corner of our material, which is where the probing sequence will take place. But if you wanted to do a two-sided project, you can add another work coordinate system as discussed in another one of our tutorial videos. We can then go to import our design files and you can import vector files like this, which are in SVG or DXF file format and ready to be selected and machined. But you can also import JPEG or PNG picture files like clip art that you might find on the web like this and use these to make your projects as well. After importing a picture file, I can trace this to turn it into a vector using the trace image function. Here you can adjust the threshold, which will select more or less of your design. And it always works best if you have a two color image like this or simple clip art, but you can also use the adjust image feature to adjust your contrast and brightness, which helps as well with the tracing. After tracing this picture, we can select it and then use the transform window to adjust its size and position. I can scale this to be the size that I'd like my tag to be, and I can use the transform window to also position this somewhere on my stock too. Likewise, I can select the vector part of my design and then use the transform window to scale this so it fits onto my tag. After adjusting the scale and the position of it, we have a good design. I'm going to delete this hole from the tracing and instead use the create window to create a hole with a three millimeter diameter at the top of my tag. So while Makeara Cam isn't a CAD program, you do get some basic CAD features to prepare your design for manufacturing, which makes this very easy to do. Now that my design's been prepared, we can start to create our tool paths that will be used to actually manufacture this using our CNC's. And typically we start from the smallest or simplest operation to the most complex. So we're gonna start by drilling this hole. After selecting the hole, I can create a vector drilling operation. And at the top here, we can adjust our start height, which is usually zero, that's the top of our stock, and the end height, which is how far the drill tip will go. Now to drill the hole all the way through, we wanna plunge past the thickness of our stock. So as the stock is 1.3 millimeters, I might drill to a depth of 1.7 millimeters, which should allow the drill tip to pass all the way through and drill into our wasteboard that we'll add to our bed later. We don't typically need to adjust the safe positions unless we're trying to work around different clamps and things, but we do need to choose our tool. So we can choose from the drill bits and you wanna choose a drill bit that's the size of the hole that you wanna create. Even if you set a hole to be, let's say three millimeters, if I selected a two millimeter drill bit, the hole would actually be created to be two millimeters. So I'm gonna select a three millimeter drill bit and also select the plastic feeds and speeds, which are chosen automatically based on my stock to use that to create this hole. Next, we can choose the retract. And this bicolor material is pretty soft, so you don't need to do retracting. This is typically for harder stocks, so you don't break your bit. But I always like to retract to a fixed height or a relative distance just to drill a little bit more slowly to prevent my bit from being dulled or to prevent potentially breaking my material. So we can set a fixed Z height retract of let's say 1.3 millimeters, which would be the top of our stock. So the drill bit will retract out of the stock each time for chip evacuation. And I'm also gonna reduce my step down just a little bit. So that way this drill is performed a little bit more slowly. We can calculate this and then see the symbol to show that we have a drill toolpath. Now notice that the tool position is automatically set to be tool one. 
That's great if you're using the Carvera Air and this is your first tool. But if you're using the Carvera, you need to make sure that you load this tool in tool slot number one. I actually have this drill loaded in tool slot three, so I'm going to change that accordingly. Next, we're going to machine the text. So I'm going to select the text and then create a vector pocket operation. At the top, we can set the start depth to be the surface of the stock, which is zero millimeters, and then the end depth. This bicolor material has a very, very thin top layer for the top color. So setting an end depth of 0.015 millimeters should be enough to cut through, even if you keep the top of the stock masked. But if you wanted a deeper cut, you could adjust that here. Again, we don't typically need to adjust our safe positions, but we do want to select an engraving bit. As this is a small detailed project, I'm going to select my 0.2 millimeter engraving bit, but if you had a slightly larger design, you could use a slightly larger tip or even a slightly smaller tip for smaller designs to make sure that you can get all the detail you need. Again, we have our plastic feeds and speeds, and then we can move into our path strategy. Offset is the default, which will work around the perimeter of our design, while parallel will pan across. For something like this, where I have text, offset is the ideal scenario, but if you had a large amount of space you were trying to clear, parallel might be optimal. We can also enable ramping, which is not required for softer materials, but it does allow us to get a cleaner cut. A ramping distance of 10 millimeters and a fixed angle of 15 millimeters usually works for most project circumstances. I can then calculate this and we should see the toolpath of the bit clearing out the text of our design. Note that the tool number was also set to two as this is where I had this tool loaded previously, but I can adjust the tool number again based on the order that I'll be using it or based on where it's loaded in my tool changer. Lastly, we need to cut this design out of the stock. So I can select this outer perimeter and then create a vector contour toolpath. The starting depth will again be the top of the stock and the end depth needs to be slightly deeper than the stock to make sure that we cut all the way through. 1.5 millimeters should work fine for our 1.3 millimeter stock. Again, we don't need to adjust the safe positions, but we do need to select a tool. For this, I'm gonna use a non-metal single flute bit and you could choose from any size bit depending on the complexity of your design. For a slightly smaller design, a 1.5 millimeter bit should work fine around the edges, but if you were trying to cut out something a little bit more intricately, you could use a smaller bit, or if you wanted to save some time, you could use a larger bit. We again want to choose our feeds and speed for plastic, and I actually like to reduce the feed rate just a bit to get a slightly cleaner cut. We can then choose the path strategy. Outside will run around the outer perimeter, which means that the entirety of the design will be retained. Inside will run along the inside, which will actually remove the width of the bit from your material, and on vector will cut directly on the line. Any of these options works, but typically you would use outside if the design that you imported is the size that you'd like your final product to be. Again, I'll enable ramping just for a slightly smoother cut, and then we need to consider tabs. Typically when doing a contour cut, you would enable tabs like this, and these tabs would actually hold your material in place during the machining process. But these tabs also need to be cleared and cut away. As this is such a thin and easy to use stock, I don't actually like using tabs. Instead, we'll perform this cut with nothing holding this material in place from a design perspective, but fix the stock to our bed using double-sided tape later. Now, I again need to adjust the tool number because we don't want two tools to be the same number as that won't prompt the tool change. So I'm gonna set this tool to be a number that I haven't used yet and where I actually have this contour bit loaded in my automatic tool changer. With all of our tool paths prepared, we can then go ahead and export our paths for manufacturing. You can choose to export all of your tool paths in the order that you'd like them to be performed, or you can export just one if you're trying to do a different type of cut or break this project up into different operations. After exporting this and saving this as a G-code file, we can upload this file to our CNC machines using the Carvera controller app. Now, before we run this job, we need to prepare the stock and our CNC machine. After peeling the protective film on the back of our stock, you can apply a few pieces of two-sided tape in the area that will be machined. We can then stick this down onto the wasteboard attached to the bed of our CNC, and also use the corner clamp and some top clamps to hold the stock down in place. You can choose to keep the top of the stock masked or unmasked, sometimes leaving the masking on as handy as it will prevent scratches on the surface of metallic stock. 
And if you're using the Carvera, you need to load your tools in the automatic tool changer in the order that corresponds with the file and the tool numbers that we set in Makehara Cam earlier. You can also choose to machine this material with the dust shoe enabled or with the air assist instead. While the dust shoe and vacuum will keep the work area clean, the air assist will do a good job at blowing dust away and preventing scratches on the surface of your stock if left unmasked. After uploading your G-code file to your CNC via the Carvera controller app, we can then open the config and run window. Here we can adjust the work offsets to position the job on your stock, though the work coordinate position set in Makehara Cam will transfer, so this might not be needed. We can then enable scan margin, which will trace the perimeter of our job to allow us to check for any possible collisions or alignment issues. We also want to enable Auto Z Pro, which will check the height of the stock and offset automatically. And when using thinner stock like this that's been fixed with tape, it's also a good idea to enable auto leveling. Auto leveling will probe across the stock to check for any bowing, warping, or changes in Z height. The Carvera will then adjust for this automatically during machining so you get an even cut across your project. As this is a smaller project and the stock is mostly flat, I'm going to set a clearance height of just two and only use three points in the X and Y axis. Once configured, we can press run to start this job. After performing the scan margin and probing the surface, the Carvera will automatically switch to the drill to perform the first operation, while the Carvera Air will prompt you to make this change. After performing the PEC drilling operation to create the hole, the V-bit will then be selected to machine the pocket of our design. And you can of course monitor and preview the progress of your CNC in the controller app during the machining process. Lastly, the single flute end mill will then be chosen to cut the contour of the part and release it from the stock. Once the job is complete, we can vacuum away any dust and peel the stock and part off of our bed. You may need to remove the mask if you left it on and lightly sand the edges of your part using a sanding block, which is included in the custom tag kit. You can then add a ring or hang and display this project, whatever it might be, and of course, sit back and enjoy it. And that's all there is to it. Using this type of material makes a high quality product at a low cost and also with ease when combined with Makehara Cam and the Carvera or Carvera Air desktop CNCs. Check out more project tutorials on the Makehara channel. Of course, please don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.